Chairman, I appreciate it. Thanks for holding this very important hearing. Uh, Chairwoman Ramirez, I want to thank you and the Commission for your great efforts on behalf of the, the Pass On uh, campaign to educate seniors on schemes that could affect them. Uh, I'm also supportive of the Commission's efforts to identify and bring enforcement actions against bad actors that specifically target uh, older Americans. Uh, although the FTC has not yet seen increased rates of fraud in older Americans uh, versus other populations, I'm concerned that as our populations, uh, the population ages and more older Americans begin using the internet regularly, that these trends will be accompanied by uh, fraud targeting seniors. Uh, it's been about two years since the Pass On campaign began. Do you have any thoughts as to what has worked best in this outreach campaign and what lessons other outreach organizations might learn from the Commission's experiences along the way? Absolutely. I mean, we certainly um, have found that outreach is an incredibly important um, tool in order to make sure that um, consumers have information available to them so that they can avoid becoming victims. The Pass It On campaign, I think, was one of, is one of our um, incredibly successful um, campaigns. One thing that inspired us to go in that direction was the fact that we learned that consumers, um, uh, in particular um, older um, consumers, um, don't like to be told what to do or what not to do. And what this campaign um, taught us is that if we can pass information, if we give information to consumers and ask them to pass that information on to their friends and family, um, they are more, much more, consumers tend to be, um, all of us tend to be more receptive to receiving that information and passing it on to others as opposed to being dictated to. Um, so that campaign has been has proven very effective. Um, we I agree with you that making sure that we address the needs of um, older Americans is, is incredibly important. So in addition to the law enforcement efforts that we undertake, um, we are um, very much engaged um, uh, when it comes to outreach and, and education. Well, thank you for f focusing on that. Your testimony states that the commission already reports on its uh, performance base for the following year and its strategic plan as required by the GPRA. This is a useful document that provides some of the highlights of the Commission's plans. However, is the FTC currently required by statute to specifically list its planned workshops, rulemakings, and plans to develop guidelines as part of the strategic plan? Uh, if you can answer that question, I appreciate it. So w when it comes to, to rulemakings, we do publish on, um, uh, actually twice a year, we have, um, uh, we publish um, uh, a chart of information about all upcoming rulemakings. What we aren't obligated to do um, is that we don't, we aren't required to identify specific workshops that we may um, decide to do over the course of an ensuing year. Um, I think that that's um, a good thing not to be required to do that because it gives us a lot of flexibility to undertake it, um, uh, workshops and other types of uh, participate in other forums that um, address issues that we may not have thought about that we see as emerging trends that need to be addressed. Um, uh, at the same time, um, I think the, the proposed measure to provide additional information about um, the work that we do in connection with um, protecting older Americans, uh, that is something that we'd be happy to provide information about, so happy to do that. But my worry is on being forced to identify, for instance, workshops. I think it has the, might have the, the unintended consequence of eliminating the flexibility that, that we currently have. Again, uh, staying on this talk, the FTC's strategic plan states that the Commission conducts workshops as a form of research, stakeholder outreach, and to advance the agency's understanding of certain issues. Again, how does the Commission decide which topics to pursue in workshops? Who is part of that decision-making decision process? Does the Commission solicit any public feedback in determining what topics to cover in its workshops? We do. It's, a, it's an agency-wide endeavor. Um, we're consistently engaging with, um, with industry, with consumer advocates, um, with um, uh, academics and other experts. So technology is an, uh, is an area where we want to make sure uh, um, that we stay current in. So when we develop ideas for workshops, we will also not only um, make a decision about a particular workshop, but we will also announce it um, oftentimes months in advance. Um, and solicit input um, uh, from experts and other stakeholders 
to um, get their views about what topics we ought to cover with, within the scope of a particular workshop. So we really do endeavor to provide a balanced um, uh, approach to the topics that we cover. Our aim with our workshops is to learn, and we take that um, very seriously. So we come at it with an open mind um, and really do solicit a lot of input before we proceed with an agenda. Thank you very much. Very informative. I appreciate it. Yield back, Mr. Chairman. Chair, thanks to the gentleman. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes Mr.